Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY, that's 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in New Hampshire, Oregon, and Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash football. All right, everybody, welcome again to Bear Bets, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Score big with DraftKings Sportsbook, the best place to bet touchdowns. Download the DK Sportsbook app and use the code BEARBETS. That's BEARBETS for new customers to get $200 in bonus bets. Hey, I'd like $200 in bonus bets, wouldn't you, Jeff Schwartz? Absolutely. Oh, 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 man. Oh, sorry. I was just holding the helmet of the number one team in the country. I'm sorry. I just was, I was a little confused. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, oh, I'm here. Yeah. Sorry, Bear. I would love $200 in bonus bets. Absolutely. Put on Oregon to win the championship right now, right? Yeah, you could do it. You can do it in New York, right? Right after we get done uh, recording the, the, today's show or uh, when I'm in New York with you on Thursday, you can, you can figure out, maybe we can figure out something to parlay it with too and get, get an even bigger. Bigger boost. How about that? One thing I have to be better at in sports wagering is the futures like you do. When you do the cross sport, like yeah. round robin a mm-hmm. championship futures, because I don't I, look, you you talk about your wins. I don't know how much you lose when you bet those, but I tell you, your wins, I think, overcome your losses in those. I feel like that'd be fun because a lot of sports, I don't have a rooting interest outside of my team to win a championship. And I think it'd be more fun if like I had the Minnesota Lynx or the New York Liberty in some sort of round robin parlay game five would have been more fun to watch, uh, or, you know, an NBA future or an NHL future. As we start those, those, uh, those sports this week, bear, I gotta, I gotta get in with you on how to do this properly. Yeah, no, it, it was a, it was a fun, I shouldn't say fun. It was a torturous weekend because I needed the Liberty to win. Uh, cause I had the, the Liberty and the aces in one of those cross sport, uh, parlay deal this was another i had a couple earlier last year that cashed during the summer and then when i was out in la for our uh, euro and copa summer soccer coverage I, I wound up flying over to uh to phoenix literally didn't leave the airport took would have 20 steps or whatever it was from the gate in the gate of phoenix airport to the delta sky club and just sat there and and fired in some some, some round robins and some cross sports uh, that this this particular one uh, started with Xander Shoffley to win the Open Championship, okay. uh, which he did. We had uh, Aaron Judge to be the AL MVP, which he's going to be, and we had the New York Liberty uh, and and the Aces to win the WNBA title. So Liberty won. So now we're three fifths of the way there. We've got Georgia or Ohio State to win Ooh. the college the, the college football playoff. And then we have six teams to win the Super Bowl. We've got Bills, Niners, Chiefs, Eagles, Texans, Ravens. So we're 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 alive. We're alive to yeah. some. You have the AFC like money. You have the AFC participant. The NFC participant, though. Yeah, the, that's, yeah I'm worried about that. Yeah, and <laughs> I've been I've been adding some Lions ever since. Yes. Yeah, the, uh, the start of the year with a little eight, 10, 10 to one boosted somewhat. So, are, are you going to add any Heisman wagers, Bear, as we approach sort of the 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 you know midway ish, a little past midway? Uh, as the the Heisman picture feels much clearer now. Look, it's 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 what it's Genty, it's Ward, it's Gabriel. Club Nick, I don't know why he's in there. I guess because if they go undefeated in ACC play, and then obviously yeah, tra- tra- Travis Hunter, um, it does feel like. The Heisman's coming from this group, and it I does. put money on Cam Ward as of this moment. I feel like I missed. I feel like I missed the boat on the window to bet both Gabriel and Ward. So that, that yes. that's what I'm struggling. With. That's what I'm struggling with. Like knowing that I should have bet Gabriel at fifteen to one or whatever he was prior to the to, to the Ohio yeah. State game, 
knowing that all my Miami friend fan friends in the massive group chat that I'm in were were laughing at me and and, and begging me to bet Ward to win the Heisman. I didn't do it, and he was twenty twenty to one somewhere around there, twenty five yeah. to one before the year, and they got some great numbers on him. I did add some Shadur Sanders to win the Heisman this week, only he was because a he was fifty to one. B Hunter has been a little a little beat up, and I think I kind of threw a scenario out there where maybe Colorado gets to the, the yeah. Big Twelve championship game. Miami loses somewhere along the way. Boise loses somewhere along the way. Oregon loses somewhere along the way, and it's like, what do you do now? And then you've got Sanders maybe with some ridiculous numbers. So. I did. I did play that. Yeah. Do I expect to win it? No, but I don't know how much more I want to put into this Heisman market. Being that I did play some long shots, and it does look like right now that it's probably Ward or Gabriel. So here's here's my my point of making the Heisman almost every year. Bear is that um, I think you have to have sort of those that that, that Heisman caliber reel of plays, right? And so we put on like a Cam Ward highlight package. Very clearly, there are some plays he's made this season that are mm-hmm. like, oh, wow, special player. Yes. Gabriel, and he's played well. His numbers are about the same as Bo Nix from last season, a little bit less than touchdowns. He doesn't run as much. Um, and, in, you know, the, the passing was was bad the first couple of games. There's just not many of those Heisman moments yet in Gabriel's game. Like, if you were to put together a highlight package of plays – it would be like run against Ohio State. It would be running against Ohio State and like three passing against Ohio State. Like and and his option running against Oregon State. Like that's like four plays. It's not he's played good football. I'm not saying he hasn't played good football, but I think that matters in the eyes of the voters, right? We're like obviously Cam Ward has those plays. Genty has those plays, unfortunately. And look, if they beat UNLV this weekend and 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 you know and, and Miami loses and Oregon loses, maybe he's in the conversation. And Travis Hunter's injury, I think, really hurts his chances, right? We have good numbers yeah. of Travis Hunter, but he only played a half last weekend. And against Cincinnati this weekend, I think the same would happen, right? If they get up big, they'll 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 remove him from the game. So you're right about the number not being great, but if you were to jump in the market now, it does feel like Cam Ward would be the best option if you're looking to just you want Heisman ticket? Take Cam Ward. Well, you made you made me feel good. How even more is that basically because you are assuming Miami will win the ACC and Oregon will lose a rematch with Ohio State? Well, I'm what I'm hoping for is Penn State beats Ohio State next weekend. I don't have to worry about play, playing Ohio State ever again. Uh-huh. Um, so I, I will have a rooting interest in that game. Uh, in that game, and then Indiana loses to Ohio State, and then we're playing Penn State, I believe, in that situation. I don't think Penn State's the third best team in the country. Um, no, no, no. I, I I just think that again, the the highlight plays of Cam Ward and his draft stock. I mean, people are talking about him as the first pick, right? Him or Shadur, essentially, or even Carson Becker, yours. I mean, those are guys in, in the discussion. Gabriel's not, that doesn't, your pro prospects don't always matter to win the Heisman, but it is Correct. been recently that Rarely a lot of actually. the picks, a lot of the picks that win the Heisman are high draft picks, Bear. Gabriel's not being drafted high. So I think all the, these are the reasons why Gabriel's playing really well, but I think everyone else would have to take a step back for Gabriel to win the Heisman at the pace he's at right now. Friday night, man. It's being we have, we we've hardly mentioned we mentioned Ashton Genty there, but uh, can you believe Boise is even money to represent the Group of Five for the college football playoff? Like, are they are they going to beat UNLV twice I, and avoid a loss yeah. somewhere else? Like, I bet Tulane it, it, like plus eight hundred, plus nine hundred to make the college football play. But I think they are the, the best G5 team out there. And I still think that that is great value because I know they got the two losses uh, against P4 teams, but I don't see Boise running the table. And I, and I think uh, by the end of the year, I, I think as Tulane continues to pick up wins and once Boise picks up yeah. uh, another loss, like there's a really good chance, I think, that someone other than Boise is the G5 rep. Well, so I like UNLV plus the points in this game. We'll talk about this again with group chat just because I, I think this Friday night conference game, like I just like the points in this matchup. Bear, the defense is Boise State plays the, the rest of the way out, 96-73, 114, 87, 108, and 83. I mean, I, I don't think anyone's stopping them unless 
there's a, a freight game where they lose like 45, 42. I, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And even the offenses, not to get to Oregon State, and that's in Boise, the end of the to end of the season, is a team even remotely good enough to, I think, play with them and to and UNLV. That's the one team. So if they win this weekend, I think they're gonna run the table. Um and at least until they play UNLV again. But I think UNLV wins this game though. So um I think we might have to we might not have to worry about that in this matchup bear. I'm looking forward to watching again. I, it's just it's on so late at night. Why so late? Why, why who wants 10 30 Eastern? Like, come on, Bear. It's a good matchup, man. G- give it to us like at a good time. We want to watch it. Give us the split screen. Give us the, the World Series with your Yankees in it. And then we can watch UNLV Boy State at the same time. Yeah, it, it, it's a good, it's a good Friday night for sure. And it, it I think it's one that sports fans will be and Sun Sun's just playing. Sun, sun, sun at the Coliseum. We'll we'll kick it all off, and and and, and I think saw our producer Sully has mentioned yeah. that he's going to head on over to the Coliseum to to take take a look at the Trojans who are just a couple of plays away from being seven and zero right now. So another another group of people that are uh, just a couple of plays away from being undefeated. Myself, you, Sammy P, and Will Hill in the gambling group chat. Yeah, far away from being undefeated for sure but uh we have a good time regardless of the result enjoy gambling group chat time again myself and jeff joined by sammy p and will hill uh pretty deep week of college football games i know we don't have the the marquee showdown like we did last week uh in austin between georgia and texas but uh, you've got five ranked matchups you got oregon illinois texas at vandy uh, Notre Dame, Navy, and MetLife, Alabama, Missouri, and a game between the only two undefeated teams in SEC play. LSU number eight hasn't lost since the, the game in Vegas against USC where they lost late. At number 14, Texas A&M. Uh, you know, give Brian, Brian Kelly, I think, is someone who's kind of a little bit of a lightning rod when it comes to uh, the coaching industry. But Last week, I thought was a spot where they totally could have fallen flat and maybe gotten tripped up after the big win at Ole Miss, against Ole Miss. But they blew a beat Arkansas convincingly. If you go back since 2012, and I got to remember this the next time, maybe Brian Kelly's in one of those toss-up kind of games. Or he's 103 and 10 in games where they are a favorite of at least a field goal. So it's like the guy doesn't lose games that he potentially could lose or should win. So here, however. Will LSU short underdog against Texas A&M, which, oh, by the way, hasn't lost since its opening day loss uh, against Notre Dame. Uh, any any thoughts on this one? I, I don't I don't have I see LSU is getting a lot of play as a dog, but I don't know. I feel a little uneasy laying points with the Aggies. I don't know why. Uh, can you tell me what we're going to get out of AM quarterback Connor Wegman? Because if yeah. you can tell me that, then then like we can go a long way and to figure out who's going to win. He's just such a hot and cold player that like whoever you pick in this game, if you're wrong, you're going to feel like an idiot because he shows flashes of being really good. He shows flashes where boy, how is this guy even on the field? Uh, and like you said, give credit to LSU, give credit to their defense because you don't think LSU and defense, uh, they, they've been really sound defensively, even without Perkins. Uh, but one thing that comes to mind why I ultimately lean towards AM here. Eight false starts last week for LSU on the road at Arkansas. That's, I mean, you're going to, this is a night game. Kyle Field, that's a tough atmosphere. Uh, cheap money line on AM, AM looks pretty good. And uh, if you have win totals on either of these teams, this is a, a big swing game for both of them. Yes. But Sammy, I lean here to AM. I like points. I think we're going to see this total keep going up, open 53, up to 54 in a couple shops right now, 53 and a half at DK. LSU is going to score. I think we know that. I'm not really impressed with their defense really either. And we know they have some issues uh, in terms of long-term injuries on that side of the ball. But I think, Bear, you you made a really good point about Brian Kelly. His teams might not win the big ones, SEC title game, national championship game, but they get better over the course of a season. Go back to last year. They're three and two, and then they rip off three straight wins. And then after the loss to Bama, they win three more. I mean, they, they get better from start to finish in a season. And that's exactly what's happening right now. There's an outside chance they could play in the sec title game too. I mean, there's, there's really a possibility. I'm not going to put, you know, the cart before the horse though. We're going to get points. There's a lot of built-in respect too, guys for LSU to open a and M only three when home field at a good school is worth four or five. They only open three gets bet right down to two and a half. 
I respect the move. I need a little bit more to take LSU. I'll bet the over, though, Jeff. I'll take some points. I think this comes down to sort of one matchup, right? It's Texas A&M that's in the upper 80s in explosive plays against LSU's defense in the lower 90s and giving up explosive plays, right? You know, we'll mention Wegman. Like, if you get an explosive plays out of him in this game, I think A&M can win the game. Now, he's shown, again, to be very up and down in that. Can the A&M offense do that against LSU? Because I think Sammy's right about the, the points on the other side. I think LSU will score points in this game. I think A&M can certainly grind out points in this game. But if they can generate explosive plays against the LSU defense that has not defended that well, I do think A&M wins. Bear, about home field advantage here at Kyle Field. I think we've talked about this on, on other shows when this has mattered. Home field advantage at A&M is not always what it is at other places, right? I feel like we talk about... Kyle Field it being like this incredible place where a bunch of teams go to lose, and it's not really the case when it comes down to teams like LSU coming in there. Yeah, no, it hasn't been. I mean, they, they clearly they had the the dominant win against Missouri, who I don't think any of us really thought were around a top ten team at the time that they played uh, Missouri a couple of weeks back. But to to get to the point about I think it was Will making before about like win totals and maybe college football playoff and SEC title game again. I think both teams have enough potentially another loss on their schedule. So it's what it's what really makes this game so important because I think I think loser is probably looking nine and three at least. Winner, you, you'll still probably look at a ten and two. You'll you look at AM, they go to South Carolina next week, which will be a very tricky game. Uh Auburn, who knows what we're gonna get out of them uh it, it Jordan Hare the week before the Aggies host Texas. And if you look at LSU, they have the idle week, and they got Alabama at home. They go to Florida, who's playing a lot better. Vandy at home, who's now ranked, and then dead team walk in Oklahoma. So it still feels like there are losable games here. But but I I, I know uh, selfishly I, I am rooting for the uh, the A and M win because I do have an LSU under nine and a half win and a Texas A and M over eight and a half win total. So uh, that that's the result I'm looking for with Bebe, and I'm invested there. I probably won't get involved at least uh, at least pre kick uh, in this one as well. Uh, the, the other the other big game, well, one of the other couple of big games in the SEC, Missouri, who we got the season win total on them under nine and a half as well. And I probably should have cast. They probably should have lost to Vandy, barely beat BC at home, escaped against Auburn last week. Br Brady Cook uh, went to the hospital for what for an MRI on his on, on his ankle, and then like came back to the stadium and uh, they, they wound up winning. Uh, against a really bad Auburn team. And Alabama, I don't know what we can really say about them. We kind of hinted at it a little bit last week about how Jalen Milrow just seems to be taking a lot of hits. Uh, and is that cumulative effect really wearing on the offense? And and I think it is. Just this Alabama team is doing so many things uncharacteristic that we're used to seeing just from having lived through, what, 17 years of the Nick Saban era. Stupid penalties, unsport. I know the Tennessee player was yapping at you, but you can't throw a punch. You can't do that there. Probably should have been offsetting. Probably should have been on both players, but you just can't put yourself in that situation when you got fourth and eight coming up and it turns into fourth and 23 or whatever, whatever that was. And Alabama can't get people off the field. It's, like as bad as Tennessee was on offense last week, like they were still in the game. So push comes to shove here. I probably would lay the 13 and a half with Alabama uh, just because I, I do think it's one of those games where Alabama kind of externally is hearing a little bit from all the ex players now. I think there is a little bit of added pressure, a little bit of uh, added emotion for, uh, for the tide here. And I have very little risk. I don't think Missouri is very good at all. Uh, I could see this one getting very ugly, uh, just like that game at Kyle Field did, Will. Yeah, and Milrow's been, it's almost like a baseball player. It's a lot of home runs, a lot of strikeouts. There's not a lot of in-between, not a lot of singles and doubles. Uh, that being said, I, I can't get the Missouri A&M data point out of my head where Missouri gave up, what, 40 po 41 points to A&M. Uh, this is a good spot for uh, I, for, a, for Bama to bounce back here. Maybe a Bama team total over, but uh, haven't bet it yet, but if anything, I would be laying here with Bama, Sammy. Ooh, there's a lot of support in the market for the under. Circa opened this 58 and a half, which... Looking back, probably was a little too high, but we're sitting 55 at a lot of shops right now. There might be some meat on the bone. I mean, the the total dipping down is probably 
a good thing for Bama because Bama needs to shut this thing down. They need to shut Missouri down, limit big plays, win this game and get out of there. All I'll say is this. I love when Alabama loses now because the fine bomb callers are incredible. <laughs> we all win. The callers on Monday. Oh, Paul, Paul, he can't <laughs> cut it, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> like they need to it, it took him seven weeks to ruin everything nick saving bill paul my, he no, can't my, do it paul my man my man legend was through the after that loss to to, to vandy about how he equated like uh, never trusting uh kalen DeBoer. like again it was like cheating like like finding your your wife in bed with your best friend like you might forgive her but you'll never trust her anyway, but Le- legend is 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 the man 31-14, I think, is the final score that, that I'm going to land on. 31-14. Bama scores enough. Missouri can't move the ball. Even at 55, I think there's a little meat on the bone there. So I mentioned this, I think, last week about why I was going to look at, at Tennessee plus the points. 14 straight conference games for Kalen DeBoer. Now 10 last year at Washington, including the Pac-12 championship game. Mm-hmm. Four now Alabama, all within 10 points in either direction, win or loss. They're all close every single game for whatever reason. This year, as Bear mentioned, undisciplined play. It's it's turnovers. It's just poor defense at times. It's Jalen Monroe making, to Will's point, we, we knew this about him, right? Like he, he's a home run hitter or 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 foul balls and 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 balls in the dirt. Like those are the, it, there's no in between with him, right? So for whatever reason, they're different than at Washington. All these games are close. They're always close. So I don't know how you could lay any number with Alabama right now over to over a touchdown, considering this is 14 games in a row now where Kalen DeBoer coached football team in, in conference play, by the way. You could include Texas, but in, in conference play now, 14 straight games by 10 points or less in either direction. It seems to be a trend that is worth highlighting. That's a, that, that, yeah, now, do you think that's a trend or do you think it's more – of a style of play and the way I, I, he and his staff I, kind of, I don't know because prep and- I mean, they look, they, they won a game 30, I mean, 41, uh, 34 lost game, 24, 17. They won games last year, 22, 20. They won games, 36, 33. I, I, I don't have a great reason for you, but they weren't a discipline last year. Right. I mean, that wasn't Washington's problem last season. Um, it's just sort of their defense was, you know, hit or miss at times. The offense, I, I thought we talked about this for months last year. I thought Penix wasn't as good as some of the bigger games he played in last season. You I, talked about it for months last year. Yes, and I was that right. Was your personal agenda and your extra grind. And, and I was right. Uh, so that's my point about the Alabama guys is like, if, and I was right. Don't lay the, I was right. Don't lay the number <laughs> on Bama. I do not trust them. You you were right. Washington got to the national championship game and lost to lost to Michigan, but but you you were right. I Jeff. was I was right. Thank you. I appreciate that. Moving on, the the other the other game, I feel it's crazy to say this between ranked teams uh, in in the SEC. Uh, show your gold, Vandy fans. Five and two ranked Vanderbilt host in Texas. Uh, Longhorns beaten up at the line of scrimmage last week. Uh, in in the loss to to Georgia, uh, pretty crazy game. We saw Quinn Ewers get kind of pulled and settled down. I guess was the quote that Steve Sarkeesian used about feeling like he just needed to settle Quinn down and, and thought maybe Arch could go in and do something. And Arch really didn't do much either. Quinn, Quinn actually played well in the second half. But uh, Sammy, do you think this opened up a little bit of a quarterback controversy here he i mean sark has been pretty steadfast uh about this being quinn's team and to make a move like that in a big game i, I think was a little weird look i i trust uh sark uh, offensively and with his quarterbacks but uh, i i think there is a, a faction of fans and, and media types out there that, that are asking the question right now is texas maybe better with arch at the helm Oof, it's a big debate in Austin. And I do a, a radio show every Friday with a guy who's covered the team for a long time. And he's like, Sark, by default, trusts the older players. He is a ride or die with experience. And when he benched Ewers in the first half, the guy texted me something that I can't repeat on this show. <laughs> so I like, he panicked, he panicked. And then he went back to Ewers, which kind of worked a little bit, but Really, what what I took away from that game was Georgia's defensive line manhandled Texas. And it was so funny because we sat on this program last week as they were betting Texas up. 
Not only were they mm-hmm. laying three and a half, but they were laying four and four and a half to five. And I thought, and I even said, I could never lay five no. with Texas. Could <laughs> never in a million years lay five. It didn't matter who they were playing. Well, it did matter who they were playing, but I was <laughs> never laying the worst of the number from three and a half to four to four and a half to five. It was never happening. And Georgia pinned their ears back and whooped their ass in the trenches. Got through that offensive line all night long. That was alarming. Can Vanderbilt do that? No. <laughs> so let's not let's not overreact and think because Georgia did it, Vandy could do it. But there is that school of thought, Jeff, and you would know yeah. this more than any of us. When you play a team like Georgia, you feel it all week in practice, and it it does it does hit you that following game. So I'm curious what it's like when you play yeah. a physical team. Does it really take its toll in that following game? I wouldn't know. Look at me. You would know yeah. that. I, well, I I think when you're that nerd, four eyed nerd over there talking about football, how dare you? Uh, <laughs> I uh, look I, 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 a couple of things here. One, these kids are are young, right? So their body, the wear and tear is gonna be a little bit different as, as you get older. But Sammy, I think if when you get your ass beat like they did, and, and you're exactly right, their offensive line played the worst game of the season. I, I was quite frankly shocked to see that offensive line play that poorly in general um, because you got your butts whooped. I think there's a renewed focus to play well this week. If it's a close game and you got kind of whooped, uh, I think it's a little different mindset. Um, but because of how bad it went and how good the offensive line can be, I think there's going to be a focus this week, a renewed effort in sort of making sure it doesn't happen again. Plus, they have a buy after Vanderbilt, right? So, you, you know, mentally, I'm sure the coaches say, hey, guys, look, man, like we got one more game. Let, let, let's go redeem ourselves and then we get a week off and, and can rest and recover. So I, I think when you get blown out this badly, good teams react in a way where they go and whoop up on Vandy. If they're not a good team, then will this game will be close. Right. And I think Texas is a good football team. They're better than Vanderbilt. I think everywhere, I think Quinn Ewers would play and be fine. And I do think this team is mentally tough, but again, throughout this season, we have seen when a sort of a team played their first sort of opponent that matched them uh, talent-wise and intensity-wise and coaching-wise, that team sort of lost the first game, right? Georgia lost to Bama, right? Ohio State lost to Oregon. We talked about Ohio State's schedule leading up to that game. Uh, And then Texas loses to Georgia, right? Michigan's not Georgia, guys. They're not even close. We'll talk about Michigan in a second. Um, So I think we'll... I lean towards Texas bouncing back here. I'm not sure I'm winning the number with them, but I think they do play better on Saturday. Yeah, I'm afraid to lay it with Texas just because Vandy does have that formula as an underdog with Pavia shortening the game, shortening uh, the clock, running the play clock. Now, I don't know if Pavia is 100%, which you know d- does give you some pause here. But look at this Texas schedule. Uh, you know, Mississippi State, Colorado State, Oklahoma, Michigan. I mean, where is the impressive data point? All of these teams, all of these data points have aged sort of poorly. Uh, maybe an under here, maybe an under just because outside of, you know, the offensive line, I don't know that Texas, there's just not a lot of you know, juice on offense and uh, they did play well defensively. You can't put that on the defense last week. It was all, uh, that was all the Texas offense. So if, if Pavi is hundred percent, I could see this game being close, but uh, bear, if anything for me to be an under. Yeah. And, and, and that we, you just alluded to the schedule and that was one of the reasons why we kind of kicked around some, some ideas last week about if you really wanted to get, frisky and maybe take a Texas to miss the playoff kind of deal or uh, an under 10 and a half wins or uh, under 11 wins uh, say just kind of the worst case scenario assume that they lose to Georgia and they lose to Texas A&M and uh, they don't have a win over a team that's ranked and you're looking at maybe a, a seven and five Michigan team being your best win and, and, like, and like could that like possibly happen so uh, and by the way I think a good job by by other I'm gonna pat us on the back last week for the uh, the Ball State Vandy game. Uh, we we kind of hinted at it how it was just kind of a a brutal spot for Vandy, and and there we were in the fourth quarter with the old the the old boys from Muncie tied up there when uh, before Vandy ultimately wound up pulling away. So uh, we we will see if Vandy can get, can get back up this week uh, after that murderous row of games and then the kind of the sandwich look ahead game. But feels like it would be. Vandy plus the points are pass for me. Don't know if I can get there or not. I, I want. I, I, I think what what Sammy was saying about like the the, the physical toll of, of that game and maybe like the the realization of a loss setting in. Like maybe there's a maybe maybe a Vandy first half kind of deal. I think there are potentially ways to 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 play this game. 
Bear, do you remember the number in the summer? The look ahead number? Take a guess what it was in this spot. I'm going to say Texas 29. Woo! 29 and a half. Nailed it. <laughs> wow. How about that? 29 and a half. So if this was, you know, Vanderbilt stock wise, this this might not be a bad time to go against. I'm not, I'm not gonna bet it, but there are people that clearly are anti Vandy because this opened 17 and got hit right away up to 18, 19. That's a big old number in the summer. And uh, you know, there's a lot of hype around Vandy right now, that's for sure. There is. Well, one one program that there's not a lot of hype around right now is Nebraska, mm. and uh, Nebraska at Ohio State is the subject of the Super Six. Uh, it's sponsored by DraftKings. We'll have the column coming out later in the week, and one of the questions will be, and this will be a very difficult question to answer. I'm quite sure. Uh, what will the outcome be of the Nebraska Ohio State game? I believe pain uh, is an option. Uh, that is what that is a correct answer. Uh, that was just. A complete embarrassment from Nebraska last week. They were beat up on every side of the every facet of the game uh, by Indiana. They they looked slow and terrible on defense. Uh, they could not protect uh, against Indiana. Uh, it was a bad beat all around. Um, Twenty five and a half point dog, holding around forty eight and a half. Huskers now have lost twenty six straight games against ranked opponents. And uh, Jeff, I don't think that streak is in jeopardy of coming to an end this week. No, we'll, we'll talk about this more with my best bet, but I'll keep it simple. I think Ohio State sort of names their score. They're off a bye. They're angry. They're upset about the loss to Oregon. And Nebraska, look, defensively, I was sort of shocked at that game against Indiana. Um, offensively, I've not been surprised to see, you know, they play with a true freshman quarterback. It's hard to, to play as a young cat. And you see with teams getting more film on them, they're scoring less and less, right? It was it was it was fourteen points against Rutgers. It was seven against Indiana. Off a bye, mind you, they were off a bye. Uh, Sammy scored seven points. I think Ohio State names are scoring this game. I, it's somewhere, I don't know, forty nine ten. I, I think it's just a drubbing by Ohio State. So he's not the next Mahomes. Is that comparison over? <laughs> Remember after week two, it was like, oh, he, he wears the same number. He's got the same hair, the same glasses. I actually, you said 49-10. I was thinking, can Ohio State get to the total by itself? And clearly you think, yes, they're not going to slow down either. They're going to just keep, they're going to keep moving the ball. Yep. I, I, I think over is actually not a bad idea at 48. They they did knock it down a little bit um, off the 49 opener down to 48. I think Ohio State could easily get to the 42. And then at that point, you need a touchdown from Nebraska. Lean over, at least on a Wednesday. That's where I'm at. Yeah, he, he's Mahomes, but bigger. That's that was the uh, that was. A cool <laughs> somebody. I like Ohio State team total over 35 and a half for all the reasons Sammy mentioned. They can name their score. You don't have to worry about you know backdoor covers or whatever from the basket. To me, Ohio State getting their 38, 42 plus points, I think, is the way to play it. Like minus 130, 135 here at DraftKings, uh, over 35 and a half team total for Ohio State over. Jeff, I'm going to ask you: Is there was so much coming out of the? Oregon game about Ohio State and their lack of pressure and yeah. defense and and how they could not they were they were very passive and, and weren't aggressive like what what do you make did you actually did you notice that as a player like it like did you see them, them maybe doing something differently or should be doing something differently from what uh, they they normally do because I mean there are numbers yeah. out there about like in their last four games against like top 10 opponents or something. And they only have like two sacks. So yeah. uh, is that something that the Ohio state defense is doing differently when they play top competition as opposed to lesser comp like, like this week, do you expect to see Ohio state blitzing and Brandon from all over the place? Or do you expect to see uh, what we saw in, in Eugene a couple weeks back? It's a good question because Ryan Day was asked about this yesterday um, in between complaining about the big 10 officiating in the Oregon game and he, uh, you know, he mentioned that there's like, it, it sounded like there's some discomfort, right, with him and sort of the defensive staff and even Larry Johnson, the defensive line coach. There was talk about Larry Johnson and and the D coordinator sort of butting heads on how to do things as well, which isn't great to be a, a top caliber team that doesn't have sort of yeah. some strife between your defensive line coach, your D coordinator. So I think the, the problem for, for them with their defensive line 
and I mentioned this heading into the Oregon game, their defense is not a very disguised defense, right? Because they have better players than almost everyone else. They just sit in the coverage, or if they're going to show pressure, it's very obvious to see, and they're just better than you, right? So they play faster than you. They have better players than you. But when you play an offensive line like Oregon, or in the games you mentioned, right, against these better teams that have offensive lines that can block your guys, well, then those one-on-one matchups become more important, and you're not getting home because they're not as good as maybe the offensive lines they're playing. And also, their body types, like, they're not the Bosa-type pass rusher they've had in the past. They're, they're big, bigger body types, and when you play bigger, stronger offensive linemen who can sort of get in the way, that's where you have a matchup advantage for the offensive linemen. So I would imagine that it's not bare bringing extra pressure. It's finding ways to move those guys around line games because they, they, they really don't stunt at all. They don't run games. They don't like do exotic stuff up front because in, in 95% of the games they play, they're just better than everyone else. And, and the games they don't, or the Oregon game, right, is when they struggle. So I think we'll look to maybe see their defensive line more active Post snap, I don't think they're just automatically bring pressure, especially against this young quarterback. Just sit back in zone and and let him make some mistakes. But there is probably like Ryan Day's talked about this. They're talking about it. They got to find ways to generate pressure against these better teams. And one of the obviously the better team we're talking about, Oregon, uh, playing a home game as the number one ranked team in the nation this mm-hmm. week, uh, hosting Illinois, who got that upset win over Michigan uh, a week ago. Uh, is it an upset though? Hey. Michigan, I, I, Michigan is. We can say this for maybe later. The Michigan, bad. They, bad. Bear, bear. Like I, I watched the film of this game just to sort of get a sense Who of what can. Illinois is. Steal someone else's quote. It's hard to put into words how bad the quarterback play is at Michigan this season. Like it was, it it made me hurt physically watching the film. I mean, there was a play <laughs> where. I know they called pass interference on one or like a holding on the other side, but like Tuttle should have thrown over there originally he didn't he turns back around and throws the ball directly to the middle linebacker for illinois like just right to him like they fumbled twice in the first 17 plays it is horrific to watch michigan play so i don't think that was an even upset like illinois is the better football team even though they weren't you know they weren't ranked as high so look my take on this game is quite simple um I don't think Illinois can block Oregon's defensive line. It's going to be a big problem for them in this game. Uh, They don't generate a lot of positive plays on first and second down, which puts them into third and long situations. And Oregon's just going to run man coverage and and say Altmaier try to beat us because they're wide receivers. Um, I don't think you beat Oregon's uh, man coverage. And I look at this game as being like right at the number, guys. I think it's like 35-14. Oregon's not – Go ahead, Bear. Yeah, Sammy, I was going to ask you, like, what what do you think the better bet is? Oregon laying the points – I mean, Jeff and Will, you can feel free to answer to Oregon laying the points, Oregon team total over, or Illinois team total under. And by the way, you mean, you were talking about that, uh, tell me that Texas number going like to five, like we were on last week. They were betting Michigan last week against Illinois, and that clearly never had a chance. I was laughing too on the Bruce and the Bear show when Bruce was saying, "Well, they're really excited for Jack Tuttle." I'm like, "Yeah, it's the third <laughs> quarterback they've been excited for in eight weeks this season." Yep, and if Sharon thing. Moore's excited for a quarterback, I don't believe it. At this, point. who's the next guy up? The other, we're really excited for the fourth guy. Yeah, okay, <laughs> drink that Kool Aid all season. Good luck. Um, so many thoughts. Uh, to your question, I'd probably go Illinois under. I also am trying to figure out how I feel about. Illinois playing Purdue and then Purdue playing Oregon and now Illinois playing Oregon. It's, I don't know how oh, I feel about that yet. What a it, twist. Is, it is so weird. And by the speaking of weird, I don't know what Tim Brando got into Friday before the game. Oh my God. <laughs> He's like, Purdue is a very, very talented young team with an exceptional coach and a rising star at quarterback. Mm-hmm. It feels like an, it feels like an elite eight game. I was like, what is he talking? And then he said that, Walters is babysitter when he was a kid was Eric the enemy. So he's got offense in his DNA. And I'm thinking, <laughs> I don't know what the hell I'm watching right now. I, it was a wild Friday and I was sober watching the game thinking like th- this, is, shock. this is weird. This is talk about Friday night lights. Um, where was I? Illinois team total under Will. there I was. Yeah, and you mentioned it. They both played Purdue in the last couple of weeks, and Oregon held them to nothing shutout, and Illinois gave up uh, 49 to Purdue. So I, I'd only look towards Oregon. The team total under with Illinois is probably the better way to go, though. Thankfully, Illinois did not allow 51 to Purdue. That, that would have been, Ooh, a, that yeah. been bad. That would have been, yeah. been a very bad, bad situation. But 
Oregon does have Michigan next week uh, on on the road. I, I again, but I, I wouldn't think that this is a look ahead spot at all. You, 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 like Jeff said, you look at that Michigan offense, and it's kind of uh, you, you might get a little overconfident if you uh, if you look ahead. Uh, the team that Binu and kickoff will see next week in State College against the team they're going to see. We're going to see this week Ohio State, Penn State. It is a very tricky game, I think at Camp Randall this week for, for Penn State. Uh, Lane six and a half. But if you go back in, in this history, like this is, it is rarely easy and very often a loss uh, for the Nittany Lions at, at Camp Randall. Uh, it's joining the Big Ten. You won 16-10. You won 31-24. You got blown out 45-7. You had one blowout win. In 2008, lost by 10 and 13 3 in 2006, lost 16 3. 2002, you won by a field goal. 1998, you got blown out. 96, you won by a field goal. So th- these games typically have been close. And we saw Penn State on the road, the, the comeback, uh, the overtime win at SC, which uh, give, them, give them all the credit in the world. Uh, again, SC is so close to being undefeated. They, they really are, Jeff. Like <laughs> one, one, one play here or there, and the one, Trojans one could, play, be, uh, the could, could be 7 0 and in, in, in ranked yeah. in the top 10, but uh, overcame a couple of Drew Aller picks. Uh, I like the Badgers here, plus the six and a half. And I know that uh, they, I know it's buyer beware. They've beaten Sunge, Purdue, and Northwestern, the Drex of the Big Ten, the last three weeks. And it's kind of built a little bit of momentum, but maybe, just maybe, this offense is starting to figure it out. Can I hope that? I I I think it feels too easy to take Wisconsin plus the points, right? Like I feel like what sometimes you when appreciate you, that. You, 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 you demotivated me right off the bat. At least at least you got you didn't beat around the bush. You just no, it feels look, too easy. Normally, I feel like sometimes we look when you want the home dog in some of these games, it doesn't have to feel like a little bit like, I just, I, I don't know. And it feels like everyone this week is like, yeah, it's going to be a tough game. It's plus six and a half. I'm taking Wisconsin. I, I think bear your point about who they've played. is a big part of this. Wisconsin's played two teams that can sort of punch with them. And they got blown out in both of those games. Penn state can punch with them. Right. We, we know that, but Penn state has to look ahead to Ohio state, but they're off a bye which, you know, kind of, I think, has you focused maybe more on Wisconsin than if it just was your seventh game in a row as you head into playing Ohio State the next weekend. So um, I will probably bet Wisconsin in the end because I think it's the maybe the, the better of the two wagers here, road dog. I, I, don't, I don't, I mean, a road favorite, I don't really like Will, but it does feel like it's, is it too easy to bet Wisconsin here? I like Wisconsin. Now look, we're, we're recording this as it's six and a half. No point taking six and a half this early because you, you might be able to get a seven. And that's all the difference in the world. And if it goes down to six, it's not as big a deal going six and a half to seven as uh, six and a half to six. I just think Wisconsin's done a good job protecting their offensive line has played well. The defense has played well and camp Randall at night. To me, those are three factors where, you know, I could see this being close. Penn state's had some slow starts offensively. I think you could just look up in the third, quarter and have this be you know 10 10 and you're you're happily you're happy to have the the plus six and a half so i think this is a close game i think penn state you know, probably wins this by a field goal or so but uh, i do like wisconsin here sammy i'm confused bear does jeff like wisconsin or not he kind of yeah, i, 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 I feel kind of easy I, you know and then i i I'll take probably, i like i like taking well, these i took maryland last weekend in this sort of the spot right but i think like everyone's gonna just take wisconsin because they should. I think Penn State just better than them. I, I get Will's points about the reasons why this game could be close, but again, I think Penn State off a bye is a big factor. It's not. I don't think it's a look ahead spot when, when you're coming off a bye like this. Jeff, I would you love, shoot up. You're in shambles over there. I, I would love. I would love for Penn State to win by three. Here's what I want. I'm setting up my play next. Yeah, you, week. you want next week? You want something I, for next week? I want Penn State plus three and a half against Ohio State at home. That's what I want. Next week. So I would have no problem with them letting Wisconsin hang around, keep that point spread north of three, and I will take Penn State at home against Ohio State. Yeah. I, I, what, 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 is there a look ahead out on that? Is it like two and a half, something like that? Two, two and a half, I would think. Uh, uh, I can check. Yeah, it's, there's got to be something. Ohio State three and a half right now. Oh, okay. So, so bet it now. Or, or, or are you going to get greedy? If Penn State kills Wisconsin – that three and a half is long gone. We know that. Right. 
Right. So you know, they said what well, you could take your you if you're looking for three and a half, in theory, you could take it yeah. now. Maybe you're not going to get the limit that, that, that you want, but you're kind of taking the equation out, you're taking that variable out where uh, you want the close game. That way you, you get a better number. So Michigan, Michigan State, who the hell would have thought that uh, these two teams would enter this week with the exact same record overall and in the Big Ten? They are both offensively inept. The only way I could play this game is under 40 and a half. Uh, it was 41, so it's probably going to continue to go down. But I just don't know how how Michigan State scores in this game on uh, Michigan's defense and, and vice versa. You, you, uh, you, Jeff, you hit on it before. The, the, the Michigan offense is painful to watch. And give Jonathan Smith a hell of a lot of credit. I think they have uh, overachieved quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, pulling that outright upset over Iowa last week was massive uh, for the direction of his program, I think. And it's a shame because I had a head-to-head before the year started with uh, Kentucky versus Iowa in terms of wins at Kentucky at like plus 280 or something like that. Uh, more wins than, than Iowa and Kentucky has completely fallen apart. But you know, Iowa is headed for the 8-4 and four or 7-5 and five that I kind of thought they were. Anyway, it has nothing to do with Michigan State. Michigan, it would be under or pass for me, Will. Uh, a- a- any thought on the uh, the Paul Bunyan, the Paul Bunyan Trophy or the Paul Bunyan Axe? No, the Axe is the Axe is a Wisconsin game, isn't it? Isn't it like a Wisconsin Minnesota game? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so the Paul, yeah, Paul Paul Bunyan Trophy, yeah. uh, I, I believe, is what this one is. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking the same thing. Either under, take the points. Uh, how about first quarter under seven and a half? Because sometimes, you know, you see these sleepy starts for these low scoring teams where it's, you know, three, three after the first quarter, it's seven, nothing. Uh, as much as I like the under two, you don't want, if one of these teams gets behind 10, 13 points, you don't want a bad yep. passing offense in that game script where, you know, things can get a little haywire with, uh, you know, pick sixes and turnovers and things like that. But under seven and a half, if they hang that, which I would think they will in these low scoring games is probably the way I'll play it, Sammy. I would love Michigan to lose because I have under nine and a half on the win total and under nine. Just keep losing, baby. Just keep losing. I, I okay. I, I I got two. I got I got a question for Sammy, but but quickly, I texted you guys this on Monday. The look ahead in the summer for this game was Michigan favored by twenty one and a half. Are are they? Is this an, an eighteen point swing, Sammy? On, on your power ratings. Where do you have Michigan, Michigan State? Because this is three and a half right now. I mean, I I just made a whole case about Michigan's offense being terrible. But three and a half feels like a super low number here for Michigan to be favored in this game. Like they, they, Michigan State might score seven to ten points. I mean, Michigan can just run the ball like Oregon did against Michigan State, and and win this game twenty one ten. I think this number feels very disrespectful. So, what do you have the power rankings of these two teams? You're basically saying this game is even on a neutral site. Michigan's at home, right? Three by three and a half. I, I can't believe that. So, I mean, not that these numbers are the end all be all, but Michigan at a 113 and Michigan State at a 108. Okay. So on a on a neutral, yeah, it should be about five. So Michigan, you give three or four for home field, about eight. I, I just yeah, think so this, it seems yeah. a little high. Yeah, I think the number seems I know I, mean, they suck. I know. They, <laughs> and they haven't announced the quarterback yet. We don't even know who's playing quarterback as of right now. So does it matter? Uh jeez. I mean, you can make a case that. If they decide to go, I I, be, I said this when Alex Orger was named the starter, you have to just commit to being that offense, right? Like commit to being like Navy, who, who we're talking about in a second. Just run the football, pass the ball seven times a game, be very strategic with it, and just commit to being that offense. And they won't do it, right? If they actually did it, I think mean, they would be much better offensively, but they sort of still try to run the same offense and then throw in quarterbacks who can't throw the football. Just accept defeat on that fact. Design an offense around quarterbacks who can't throw the ball and understand that if you do get behind in a game, you're just going to lose, But which you already do now, guys. So, I don't know. I think this number is, is very, very low. Um, I don't want to bet Michigan, but I, I don't know. I wouldn't bet Michigan State, though. You, you, hint, you hinted at it, Jeff. You, 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 we're going to talk Navy. You're going to talk – you, you take the reins. Go ahead. It's your, it's your podcast. It is my podcast. Thank you. Um, uh, I, I, are we sure Notre Dame doesn't blow out Navy? Can, can I read you guys the uh, the? That's been the re- that's been the result more often yeah. than not. Like, can I read you the the SP plus rankings of the teams that Navy has been so far? And they've done a great job. No, 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 no. Uh, 127, 59. They won that game by twelve against Memphis. They allowed forty four points in that game. One nineteen, one twenty five, one twenty two. 
I don't know. Notre Dame feels a lot they, better they, than they those teams. Beat, they did beat Charlotte last week. They they, they won, did. They yes. Won, they want to. They wound up squeaking that yeah. one out. Bare, barely with 45 first half points. I don't know, Will. I feel like Notre Dame is 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 going to beat them by two touchdowns or more in this game. They're just much better. And I, I talked about earlier, like when these good teams play sort of a team that's finally up to their level, they're losing a lot of these games. I, and I know that we're not talking about winning and losing per se, but I like Notre Dame to cover this game. Yeah, I and mean, people are going to see the Service Academy getting points and think, oh, that's uh, that's a team I want to back. I just think this is uh, – Bear, Bear calls it one of those dog with fleas. And, Jeff, your handicap is my handicap. The fact that you gave up 44 to Memphis, I mean, just go through their schedule. UAB, Charlotte, Air Force. <laughs> this is a different animal. Notre Dame is really good defensively. Uh, they show some flashes offensively. They already you know, had their upset where they can't just you know come into this game thinking, all right, we'll just roll through this game after what happened to Northern Illinois early in the season. I think Notre, uh, I think Notre Dame rolls here. I, I'm, I'm probably laying the points here. I have a buddy in college on top of the bartender who is on fire in the NFL. <laughs> I have bartender a buddy who is the sharpest handicapper we know. I have a buddy in college who says, if you just bet Army and Navy every week, you can retire. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, okay. He's 12 and one against the spread off yep. the opener. 12 yep. and one. That simple. You just bet Army and Navy every week. Eventually that comes to an end. I would think ND would roll. By the way, Jeff, I made you a sign. I don't know if we're going to get to the Rutgers game, but in case we did, I made you a sign. Don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. I didn't know if you were going to go back to Rutgers this week, but no, just in case you're no. thinking about it. I, okay. I I might lay it with uh, with USC Friday night and just in, in anger over Rutgers being so bad, but USC, geez, they're, they're I don't know. I, I don't know if Rutgers can stop them, but no, no money on Rutgers this weekend, guys. Thank you, Sammy. I appreciate you holding me accountable. Yeah, we, we we tried to hold you accountable before, and you, and you just you just continue to bet against all your old Pac-12 rivals that that, that you hate. Oh, I will this week. Don't worry, it's coming up soon. <laughs> oh, but by the way, speaking of uh, like uh, not a Pac-12 rival, but another another undefeated team like Navy. How about BYU now as an underdog at three and four UCF? I, I went back and and I, and I looked this up. I, since 1978, there have been 336 games where there's been a team 7-0 and or better against a team with a losing record. Only one other time has there been a team 7-0 and or better that has been an underdog against a team with a losing record. It was 1993 when that uh, Auburn team that was on probation was 9-0, and went to 4-5 and in Georgia, and wound up beating the, the Bulldogs 42-28. The only thing I worry about here is after the way UCF lost that game in Ames on Saturday night, it is the is the white flag waved, or is this one of those kind of take out your frustration? Because because Sammy B BYU can't keep doing this, can they? You would think no, but the support is there for them every week. Um. I won't. I won't bet that game. I'm gonna bet another letter school. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have UNLV for a nice little chunk on Friday night. I like Friday that. Night. Uh, I like not that. to change gears, but Will has been reminding us every Friday about Friday night chaos for the favorites. And I. I was watching a segment on TV this morning of of somebody penciling Boise State into the playoff. Already. Oh, here we go. Yeah. And I. I thought. That's interesting because they're going to be in a war on Friday. The line is three. Boise's a yep. three-point favorite. Not Genty's going to play well, but UNLV is going to give them a game, I think. So I'm I'm going to pass on the BYU, and I'm going to take the UNLV. That's my move for Friday. Sammy, I've been hearing it all week myself. I, da I dare, dare made the suggestion that maybe Tulane might be the best group of five team. And uh, – you had the, the close loss to Kansas State where they got screwed with a, a pass interference call, and there was an out of it to a touchdown late. And then they were in the game late and uh, with, with Oklahoma and wound up giving up two late scores, I think, in the final five minutes of the game to make the score like a heck of a lot worse. Like, I, I suggested that, and it was like, well, what about Boise? Boise, Boise, clearly Boise. So everyone loves Boise. So we'll see what happens Friday, Sammy. Line's only three, guys. It's only three. It's not seven. It's not oh, ten. By the way, oh, by the way, three. they're probably going to play again. Any thoughts, BYU, uh, UCF, uh, Will, or Jeff? 
It reminds me of your old buddy Lee Corso. It's the game where uh, somebody knows something. I'm going with the somebody's. I'm not though. I think I think BYU is just a better team. And I was against them last week with Oak State. Oak State covers, but I just think BYU is just a more solid team. I don't know where UCF is at mentally. Uh, as, as far as UNLV, I want to get there with UNLV, but it, the game last year in the conference title game last December just sticks out to like a sore thumb to me. I think 530 yards of offense for Boise. What's really changed in that time? So I I, I don't know. I. If, I haven't gotten there, Boise State. I, my first look was to UNLV, but once you dig into that box score from last year, it's really concerning. There you go. Right there, my man, my man Jake Rotsloff. Hey, man, if <laughs> a, a, a Jewish quarterback in a Mormon school winning on Yom Kippur, man, it feels like it's uh, it's uh, it's going to be a, a year, a, the year of BYU. I'll just say this about <laughs> UCF guys: they can't hit the quarterback. Like their pressure rate's terrible, and they have eight sacks on the season in seven games. If you can't hit the quarterback, you can't win a lot of games, especially against an offense that can move the ball like BYU. I, I lean BYU here, and I like UNLV plus the points. Um, I, I want to see Boise State play a better offense. They've basically played one this season, um, and they actually played well against Oregon. Um, Oregon scored two times on special teams in that game. So uh, the, the bummer is this game is so late at night, 1030 Eastern. We couldn't put this at a, at a better time. I, I, I get the World Series is on, but nonetheless, I feel like this game should be on at a better time. Quickly, Colorado feel cheap under a touchdown this week against Cincinnati, or does that feel about right, Sammy? Colorado's been covering like crazy the last couple of weeks. I mean, it, we talk about a team that not only wins, but covers five and two against the number, 71%. And it, it's sort of weird. Last year, I don't want to say we as a show, but we as a collective landscape just bashed Colorado at every point. And now they're good. and. They don't get talked enough about yeah, I, I, I don't think. I'll tell you it's why. It's weird. I'll, Sammy, I'll tell you why. You're exactly right. Colorado's good this year. They're 5-2. and two. They're playing good football. Last year, people, not, not us four, tried to convince everyone they were good. And everyone spent the entire time arguing about that. And we just got Colorado fatigue. And now that they're actually good. Like, they deserve the praise now. They're they're good. They're, they're playing. They're, they're hitting the quarterback much better. Shadur's playing well. Like they're they're a good football team right now. We spent eighteen months arguing about Colorado, and then we just got tired of talking about Colorado. Like instead of praising them last season when they were bad, and everyone wanted to tell us how good they were, this is the year to be praising them. But I, I, look, I think Will the, the 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 Nebraska loss, you know, in that prime time situation, the way they lost that game was sort of the same way they lost games last season. Um, I love Colorado's uh, team total over last week. We we we, we talked about this. If you cannot hit Shadur Sanders, you cannot win football games uh, against Colorado. And I'm not sure Cincinnati can do that enough in this game uh, to to keep this one close, Will. Yeah, meanwhile, Colorado last week got seven sacks against Arizona. We know their passing game, uh, how good that is. And look, if they can even get to a Big 12 title game, that brings in the whole conversation of Hunter. Would that be enough to, to push him over the top for Heisman, depending on what else happens? I still think Colorado is very live for the Big 12. Not you got to win this week because, um, you know, you already have one conference loss and you have two teams in that conference that are undefeated. That's such a fun conference, such a wide open conference. But uh, I like Colorado here. I do think this line is cheap there. And you, you get, I mean, there's a good chance, I think, that they went out. So you mentioned Hunter for the Heisman. I worry about him being hurt, uh, beat up the last couple of weeks. Like, Jeff, I'll throw this back yeah. to you because you, you were the one that mentioned it last week. And I can't remember if it was on the NFL podcast or if it was just kind of us in passing about Shadur gonna, is going to be the number one pick in the NFL I, draft. Well, when I was at in Indiana yeah. this past week and he was available at six to one to be the number one pick in the draft, and, 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 I, and I made that yeah. wager, but. Could he, if Colorado winds up 10 and two and you get a, some other events, should right now is 50 to one to win the Heisman. Yeah. Can he potentially work his way into the Heisman race and maybe at the expense of his teammate, Travis Hunter? Uh, he can be in the discussion, but I think that Miami is going 12 and 0 and Cam Ward's going to win the Heisman. So that that's probably taking away from Shadur, right? I mean, who's my, we talked about this on, on our call yesterday, Bear. I know you're a Miami guy and you're, you're penciling at a loss somewhere. I, I don't, where's the somewhere? Is it at Georgia Tech with, with Haynes King healthy and ready to go? Is it, is it Syracuse last game of the season up in the Carrier Dome? But my point is like, I, I mean, Cam Ward is, his variance, I mean, he's so good and then he makes some, some dumb plays, but I, I feel like this is sort of Cam Ward's to lose at the moment. 
uh, Genty might be the best player in the NFL. I mean, the NFL and college football. Travis Hunter might be the best all-around player. But Cam Ward's going to be playing on an undefeated team, uh, Sammy. And I feel like that's sort of what the Heisman's going to be. It's going to be Cam Ward and and anyone else. Will just, you know, there'll be a couple guys in New York, but it'll be Cam Ward's award to lose at the moment. I think they're running the table. I, I think they're a team of destiny, much like the Padres and the Mets, although they both lost. That was a narrative. <laughs> yeah, how the Padres do? <laughs> Padres, uh, Padres and then Mets were both teams of destiny, and they both lost to the Dodgers, which was I thought was very funny. Um, they, I think we're going to get Miami Clemson, both undefeated into the ACC title game. I'm I'm bullish on that. I've thought that, I've thought that all season in that conference. Undefeated in conference play, obviously Clemson lost to Georgia. I think they're both going in. DraftKings has Miami minus 400 to make the playoff. Clemson minus 300. If they both go to the conference title game undefeated in. in the ACC, they're both, they're both in. in. If, if I was thinking before, Miami feels a little 2022 TCU-ish to me. The fact that they pulled some games out that maybe they very easily could have lost and very obviously Cal and Virginia Tech very easily could have lost again. High scoring games, Heisman level quarterback play from if you if you look at what uh, TCU had with Duggan and, and now Cam Ward. So we'll see. But I, I agree with you. I, I think we're headed towards the Miami Clemson uh, ECC title game. Even though Clemson does have a couple of close, tough games coming up down the road, uh, I think Miami should be there as well. Guys, I appreciate you I'll hop it on the group chat as uh -oh, always. Bear. Uh -oh. What? I what? got a I got a six figure number just now. Uh oh. I mean, we want it, right? Yes. Three zero eight nine six zero Southeast Missouri State. <laughs> Simo. Uh, let me write this down. We don't have any lines up though. That's the problem. Other he's than saying, that, though, he's saying yeah. fourteen fifteen is good. Hosting okay. Gardner Webb. The 308 Of course they are. The Bulldogs. Exactly. It's the three three o'clock Easter is the right right when right when Ohio State Nebraska is officially ending. We we can we can tune on into whatever local access uh, cable channel might have uh Gardner Webb at SEMO. So that's one to end on. Guys, appreciate it. We'll do it again next week. Bear, Sammy told us we we're getting no FCS play, and then he he snuck one in for us there. I love, Simo, I love it. You know, I'm all about it. I hope he texts on Saturday to remind me to, to make that wager because the game's at three o'clock Eastern. That means the number posted like 12 or 12 30. So make exactly. sure to I'll, 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 I'll be, I'll be in the horseshoe on the sideline. Just to finish my, my, my doing my, my DraftKings uh, parlay par for big noon kickoff. And I'll be trying to refresh, get his signal out there to be able to, to, to find the Simo Gardner web number. I love it. Thanks all right. I'm going to go with my fate of the week here. Uh, I'm going to fade, as you joked about earlier, a, a former Pac-12 team in, in Washington on the road at Indiana. Indiana laying uh, the six and a half here. I get Indiana's no quarterback. No concern about out. the work injury? No, because I think Indiana's style of play plays well against Washington. But remember, this is a fade of Washington, right? Washington on the road this season, or at least not at home. They played a neutral site game in Seattle uh, at not their stadium, at the Seahawks stadium. They're 0-3, right? They're 0-3. They lost to Rutgers in a game they should have won, but they lost. And the reason why they're undisciplined, got blown up by Iowa, lost to Washington State. How about these numbers, Bear? Third down offense at home, 49%. On the road, 27% conversion percentage. Third down defense at home, 23%. On the road, 48%. Rushing defense at home, 3.38 yards per, uh, allowed per rush. On the road, 5.4 yards. Penalties jump four penalties more and about 40 yards more a game on the road, Bear. It's an undisciplined team. I get they're off a of bye. I understand that. But they're an undisciplined team now on the road. This game is an early kickoff for them, a 9 a.m. body clock game, game day in Indiana. I think the Indiana style of just running the football, playing aggressive defense. I like Indiana to cover this game, Bear, even without work. Yeah, and that performance in in, in Kinnick a couple of weeks back was just it, 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 not good, not 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 no. good for sure. And no. I, I never want to see a Washington kicker on the field again. Well, they, he uh, makes the kicks against Oregon. That's all that matters to them, I guess. Right? Obviously, <laughs> sucks. Yeah, you can't miss against but us ever. For, for for my best bet, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, I'm gonna I'm gonna head to the uh, the Mac, and and I know you're probably very excited about this. Uh, we're going to give you a, a, a nice logo game, a little Saturday matching 
I'm going to take Akron plus three at home against Eastern Michigan. Uh, I don't want to say like sneakily Akron is getting good or better, but I think if you look at the way these teams have played in conference play so far, Akron is certainly drawn the much more difficult schedule. They played Ohio on the road. They played Bowling Green, lost by a touchdown. They played at Western Michigan, and they lost by 10. Those are three of the better teams in the league. Whereas if you look at Eastern, who I love, look, I, 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 I am all, all about Eastern Michigan and, 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 and brick by brick and the factory. And I, I got an Eastern Michigan uh a shirt actually on the back of my chair. I'm going to take it off right now just to, just to show y'all. Like I, I I got one of these bad boys. Like e, 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 EMU and me, we're, we're tight. So this hurts to do to, uh, taking Joe Moorhead and the zips, but the e, e, EMU, they, they played Kent State. They played Miami of Ohio. They played Central Michigan, three of the worst teams or l- lesser caliber teams uh, in the MAC. I, I think uh, Joe Moore is finally getting it figured out a little bit in, in that league, and, and they're getting better. They're getting there. I think they're much more closely matched up with with EMU uh, than I think people would think if you just look at the records. Uh, so I am going to take the zips at home plus the three. I have a soft spot on my heart for Joe Moorhead, former Oregon offensive coordinator, did yep. a really good job uh, at Oregon before he uh, unfortunately had a medical incident. Um, so I'm I'm glad uh, to back him anytime uh, possible, Bear. So I can't oh. say I can't say I watched a second of Akron this season, but uh, by, by the way, how about me with props this week? I got my BYU BYU quarterback shirt. I got my my EMU factory shirt. I need that. I need that BYU shirt. Right? You, you need to send me a a message. Let me know where to get that from. Um, cause that, uh, it's, it's my, my, my member of the tribe there. All right, bear, my, uh, my best bet presented by DraftKings sports, but we talked about a little earlier. I'm just taking Ohio state against, against Nebraska. I mean, it's as square as can be. It's 25 and a half bear. You're, you're, you're at this game, right? W- would it surprise you if at halftime while you're having a little, a little grub, it's 35, nothing Ohio state. No. I mean, Nebraska guys, no. Is uh, so 21 points their last two games. They're 84th in points per drive. They're sort of getting worse with more film on them. Offensive line can't block. We talked about earlier. Ohio State's going to want to bounce back up front on the defensive line, and uh, they're they're 100th in the country in yards per rush, excluding sack yardage. So we know that gets added onto the rushing totals. And you, if you can't run the ball, it's Ohio State. Like, what, what are you going to do, Bear? So um, this is a, a, a big a, a game where you, you know, Ohio State names their score. And I don't think this is a game either, Bear, where I'm looking at like a backdoor cover, like a Rayola leads a, a drive late to win, you know, to cover this game. So Ohio State minus 25 and a half. It is square. I do not care. I'll take Ohio State in this game. <laughs> yeah, it, it does. It would worry me a little bit. I, I think Ohio State's going to blow them out too. But we have seen some games and some instances this year where you've had teams get absolutely annihilated and then uh, a little bit of pride just does come into play. Of course. The following yeah. weekend they perform. But at the same time, I think the flip is true for Ohio State with losing the undefeated season uh, the, the week Hate before and kind of being questioned now, are they really this good? Yeah, I, I think this adds up to a pretty big make sure we- Ohio State win. So. Anything else uh, quickly oh, before we oh, go? Oh, no, sorry, sorry. I put my helmet back on. Sorry, no, no. I'm just I'm ready to watch football this weekend. I am. I think we're we're always ready to watch. And the good thing is, we're now in the time of the year where you don't have to wait until the weekend to watch football every day, those, baby. Those, those of you hardcores who sat through uh, the, the Bearcats and FIU last night, you 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 know, you know who you are. You're our people. <laughs> You're the people. <laughs> You're the people who subscribe, who watch every week. You rate and review. You download on Spotify, Apple, right. wherever else. You, you watch us with props and make fun of each other on the YouTube channel week in and, and week out. Bear, do you have the stomach we, tonight to lay, I mean, to to take 26 with Kennesaw State hosting Liberty? Oh, they're terrible. Oh, and 6 Kennesaw State. I took them once. I took them against... Um, was it San Jose? Was it San Jose State? Maybe no, it wasn't San Jose State. It was. It was. The same day it I, was. They lost thirty-one ten. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's right. I, I remember. I took. Um, I took air. It was. It was one week. It was a week after. I think when we talked about Coach Ken and they played yes. Air Force. There might yes. be a little bit of a letdown, and and, and there was no letdown. Ken Stahl is right there with Kent State. Is one of the worst. So we lay in the twenty-six history. with the Flames. They're not as good as they were. I know. 
No wager. Nah, I can't. No like wager, 26. everybody. No wager. No, 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 Kennesaw or pass. Hate yourself. <laughs> hate the ugly dog or pass. Maybe, maybe make this a date night before the, uh, uh, the, the the big next couple of days of college football. So, again, appreciate everyone out there for uh, consuming us the way you do. Uh, for Sammy, for Will, for Jeff, I'm Bear. Less you bet, more you lose when you win.